Let's take a look at CRRA and let's take a look at the first word, Connecticut. We are not a separate entity like some other organizations that represent only a small sector of the state. We represent the entire state. Our role, some eight, ten years ago, when I was a lot younger, was to save the company that went bankrupt. We had a legislative action, as you know, that took the board and removed it and put the legislature with some control as to who was going to be appointed. And in their wisdom, they appointed people who had special talents. Right? Special talents in finance, uh, in energy, in business, not only the CEOs. Right? They appointed the CEOs because we wanted to be at the table. Uh, I was one of those people that called up and said, hey guys, there's something wrong here. We lost a quarter of a billion dollars on a consent calendar. What's wrong here? Right? That was the worst thing I did because I called back and said, okay, so you got an idea, it's yours. Right? Our board has worked to, one, save the company, right? And then to take a look at the new business model, right? Yeah, you know, we talk about cost. One thing we found is that, you know, CRA was paying a 33% indirect cost to one of our contractors. Right? We thought that was high. You have heard a lot of stuff over the years of CRA, and we have been the whipping boy of everybody in the world. I will tell you, the people that have been on my board have been excellent. The, the legislator has never sent us anyone who didn't work diligently on the connected behalf. We wound up with not only collecting all the money back and paying off the debt and distributing $36 million, nine more you would have gotten, but it went someplace else. But we also were faced with the fact that we had to come up with a new business model. Why? The Bridgeport plant, after the first Bridgeport went bad, the second one was for 20 years with Bonnie, and then it went to Wheelbreaker for a dollar. We did the best we could to try to save that and not turn it over, because we thought public option was important, but that's the way the contract was. Wallingford, same thing. After the period of time, it went over to Kavanta. We tried to convince the Wallingford area towns, because they were sitting on a bunch of cash that we had in the reserves, to buy it. They decided not to. That went away. But what we did do was buy capacity within those plants. We don't own them, but we own capacity. So we're able to handle the Bridgeport towns, the Wallingford towns, and what we're trying to do now with the Midcon Town, that's the jewel, that's the one we own, is to be able to do this poster stamp and not have stuff just float around crossing each other so that we can accommodate wherever people are within the state. The other thing that we learned, all of us, was that when the Enron thing happened, it was our full faith and credit <laughs> that was at stake. In the new contract, that's gone. In the new contract, there's a ceiling. If we breach that ceiling, you can opt out. It's a name driven. You pick what you want, what you don't want. So a lot of the things that we found ourselves in trouble with when that unfortunate event happened, we've tried to correct in the new MSS. Right? Where we are through this whole process was I remember going up there, I've probably said this before, um, I was chairman and I was also the president for the first six months. Nobody wanted a job. Uh, I never took a dime for either role. I paid my own gas, right? And when we did that, we started to take a look at how we could reduce costs. The mandate to me as chairman and, my, and the board was written by three gentlemen, don't remember their names right now, but three gentlemen for the governor and this was their recommendation. Raise 10 fees to $110, borrow $115 million from the state and cut costs. I took the third one and altered the other two. 
Yes, we did go up on our tip fees and things like that, but when we try to flatline things out. The other, the other thing that we're trying to do with CRA is make it responsible. Right? Responsible in this sense. Uh, we had a choice of going and trying to get more capacity at the Hartford landfill. We, we thought, as a board, that there had to be some justice in the world, particularly to Hartford, and not go after additional height. And it was time to close it down. That was a decision working with Hartford. I brought it to the then mayor. We met several times. And what we also did was, instead of adding insult to injury to the city of Hartford, because the contract, there was language in there that one could argue, but pretty much Hartford was going to be responsible for closing the landfill. That didn't seem just to the board. So we paid for closing the landfill, I think some $30 million. But over the course of the nine years, 10 years, we have worked for Connecticut because there were so many pieces that had to be covered and change the model because the old one wasn't there anymore. The cash cow of what the company was was gone. Okay? And in the meantime, you know, listen, you have your board of selectmen, your board of finance, whatever you are. You know, when you go to your meetings and there's always somebody there who's staring you down and writing little things and somebody writes a nasty little editorial. That's what we do for nine years. Okay? The thing that we've tried to do is rise above that and do the public's interest. You heard communications. We do the best we can. Right? We now have a thing before us about new governance. I, I'm here to tell you today, what I signed up to do is over. Save the company, get a new business model, and move on. So I don't take this personal. Some people are trying to make it personal. It's not. This is strictly business. We did, and Tom was good enough to come to the board and gave a, a sheet of paper of, of what the committee had voted for, right? And Tom can characterize it, but I said, Tom, thank you. But I'm looking, I was looking for an expanded report. Give me the problems. If we're going to go to the legislature, I want to go one time. And I want a clear definition of what the problem is substantiated by whatever evidence there is, and then anything that we're going to change, all right, what will be the benefit of that? Right. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I don't have any stake in this. Right. But if we're going to do it, I want to make sure we don't go back to where it was before the legislature's uh, leadership took ownership in the company. I think that's important. We live in a very, very political world. And for all of the towns, when anything happens, you know, there's always a political drive to it. Right? In our drive for CRA for you is dollars. Right? right now, I think we're $69 a ton this year. We're looking at 62, all right? We're trying to drive it lower. One other way of driving it lower is some, something new we're gonna try. Tom can speak to later. In the business, you get a lot of garbage, you know, in the summer and not as enough in the winter. So what happens in the summer, you have to export it. You saw some of those numbers, it's costly. In the winter, you don't have enough, so you gotta sell your capacity cheap in the spot market. We're looking at a way that's environmentally correct and scientifically correct to bail some of the garbage. Basically, we take garbage as just what it is, a commodity and we can flatline the tons that we need. Sorting it when it's over, using it when it's under, and get away from the shipping. We think that can save us several dollars a ton. When we take a look at the, the uh, type two or whatever it is, uh, so that we can get more of our electricity, think of that. We're all doing the right thing all we need is that two cent credit. We save ourselves $10 a ton. That is a tremendous amount of money. So we're hoping to gain some support on that. This doesn't cost anybody anything, but it saves all of us and our taxpayers $10 a ton. So if we take a look at the recyclables coming out with the single stream or not, 
Every dollar you every ton you recycle saves you 69 here, and you get five dollars back. If we get the two cents a ton here, that's another ten dollars. We get our new contractor that's going to save us money. All right, we're making business decisions, not political decisions. A lot of the pressures are political pressures, and I understand that. I'm not naive, but my role, our board's role, is to make business decisions. It was the Attorney General's role, Dick Blumenthal, and he did a good job for us, to make all the legal decisions. Even when we took the, Jimmy's not here, Jimmy and the team of the credit, when we got our first check for the Enron suit for the 84 million, whatever it was, you know, as Tom said, you know, they put together a package, went to Deutsche Bank, and sent it out there. Who would have thought anybody would buy that kind of paper? and we sold it for $111 million. We still have some lawsuits going. I don't expect to get a, a bunch of money, but we're not gonna leave anything on the table. If we get any money back, we're gonna distribute it back to the tenants. Hopefully we get it back. So we have attorneys working on that. I think my message to you is that we try to work in the best interest of the state, and I think we've done that. All of this, the stuff and the anger that went with CRA really, I think, was vetted out for something before us, and then it just got into follow the money. And follow, follow the money is how do we position this, the state? The only plant that we will own is Midcon, and we've paid off all the debt. So we recovered money, we distributed money, we held the tip fee down from the 110. We never borrowed the 100, $110 million from the state. Actually, there was one time when Mark Ryan was around, he was on our board. <laughs> he told me flat out, that's not gonna happen. You know, the state was starting to run into some, some trouble and Mark was trying to juggle things around. We did borrow 19 million, and I think we paid it back into the three years. So, this is not a you and a me or an us. Take me out of the loop, right? A lot of people like to use me as the target, okay? Not all of you, I'm not saying that. My days are gone. I signed up to, to do just what I did with the company, new business model, all right? And look for the next challenge, right? What you have at stake is what's in the best interest of your town. The governance is important, we'll take a look at it. But what is important is to have a public option. What is important is to have decisions made for the town's interest and not for any one entity's interest. CRA included. Okay. Because the garbage will flow, but it will be different going out into the future. Uh, I think that the last thing I, I would say to you is that we're trying to be as environmentally correct as possible. We're trying to help you get rid of the stuff that's a problem. And Doc was sitting at the table, <laughs> and we came up and we had a discussion at one of the Mac meetings, I think it was about mattresses, and how much of a trouble is the lady shaking her head, remember? And, you know, I said, fine, we threw in 20 grand from CRA to do a study, and then I asked Doc to be a committee of one representing us with the DEP to find how we can get rid of mattresses and box spring at a much less cost, still environmentally correct. We did it with electronics, we're doing it with other things to see what we can take out of the waste stream. Now, we don't have a landfill. I'm one of those people who think that's a good thing. I don't know where you stand on that, but I think that's a good thing. It's nice to go by Hartford and see potentially what will be a green mountain instead of trucks. That's our capital. I got criticism on that. What are you doing? It's going to cost us more money. doesn't matter. That's our capital. If you're going to have people coming in an airport and you're going to try to do business in the state of Connecticut, first thing you see is a landfill. Not, not necessarily the most attractive thing. So Hartford has taken the hit for all of us for a long time. Our facilities are there. So I think we have to be respectful of that. Okay. 
Moving forward, if anybody wants to be on the board, tell one of your legislative leaders. I'm sure they'll be happy to have a list to draw from. I will tell you this, it's been an exciting time and it will continue to be. It does take some time, but if you're interested, as some people are voicing they are, there's an opportunity to come on the board now. We don't have to wait for legislative changes. But I will say this, I am not, as chairman, going to bring a legislative change and rush it through where I think that there's problems. Because there's too many years to straighten it out. Right? Legislative buy-in and their responsible actions of who they appoint, I think, is key. Now, how many people we want on the board, that's arguable. Right? The other thing I think we have to do is understand the fact that as we move forward, right, um, the business is going to continue to change. Now, I know John represents you know, a, a private entity, and I look at what they're doing now. Because the private sector usually does things in advance of the public sector, because one, they have the latitude to do it. There will be some good changes coming up that will be good for the environment, and help reduce the amount of stuff that we have to process. Who would have thought that electronics, you would have gotten rid of them for free? <laughs> Think of that. So there are things coming up that the state will have to make decisions. I'm going to shut up and sit down, but my offer to you is this. If you have any suggestions, legitimate suggestions, call me. If you're interested in serving on the board, call your legislator. If you have something that is case specific to your town that's problematic, if CRA can help you, we'll do it, including having a free re recycling for electronics. We'll do that. So I think the biggest thing that I, I, I tell people is look, the first word is Connecticut. Right? The four letters become CRRA, but we are Connecticut. We are not running this company for its own well-being and existence. And it has no political power, trust me on that one. We're doing this to break even, the net cost of operations. So <coughs> the door is open. Right? I think as we move in with the new model, this is an opportunity for perhaps us to have a different relationship I will be the first one to admit the last 10 years my focus has been just on keeping the lights on of the company. Right? But we're here in this room together. Hopefully you're all gonna get a check. Is everybody gonna get a check Tom? Yeah. Everybody? Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I hope not. <laughs> and I wanna see Tom's son's check before it goes out. <laughs>